Good evening, gorgeous flower pots. It is Wednesday night. It is 9 p.m. It is time for Nighttime with Nelly. We are back in the house. Hasn't it been a long time since we sat together with me perched on the end of this bed and we sorted out the nation's problems, international problems. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be watching me from. It is so good to be back with you on a Wednesday night doing night time with Nelly. Any advice I do give on tonight's show is purely for entertainment purposes. Over 18s only, there will be talk of a sexual nature and strong language throughout. So viewer discretion is advised. Good evening, one and all. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me that like, give me that love and give me that share. Spread the love, spread the luck, I'm back in the house. So Edward King says, I'll be there Nelly, won't miss it. We've also got lots of people saying, such as Amy Freeman, I have missed you so much. It's so good, be good. So, it's so good to see you back. Anna Richardson, good to see you back. Uh, who then tagged a friend, Sarah Richardson. She's on her way too. And Beth and Sarah Crisp is watching. But we've got a lovely lady called Gemma Brockbank who says. I definitely need a giggle tonight, Nelly, because I'm in my hospital bed in Bolton. God bless you on the Dent Road. And everybody is saying it is so good to see me back on a Wednesday night at 9 o'clock with Nighttime with Nelly. If you are a new follower, you've just clicked on this link, you don't know what the fuck's going on. It is an Agony Ant show. I am an in international Agony Ant, have been for five years now. People write into the page on a Wednesday night, it's over 18s only because they are sexual nature problems, let's just say, and there will be strong language to write because I'm about and I'm uncensored. So viewer discretion is advised. Good evening, welcome and thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now somebody's just put in the comments, Nelly, how did your date go? Can I just say that my inboxes have been overflowing with people saying, how did your date go? How did your date go? Nelly, Auntie Nelly, I want to know how your date went. My date went absolutely fucking smashing. It was absolutely tip top. Uh, what an absolute belting lad he is. So yeah, met this lad, been on a date. Um, absolutely cracking time. I have never felt as happy. I have done nothing but laugh with the lad. He's absolutely hilarious. He's called Danny, he's from Bury, and he's absolutely gorgeous. Six foot six is the man. Um, so yeah, he's beautiful. I'm really, really, really happy. And the reason I said it is we're back in the room. And I always say, welcome back to the room where there's no action. Action is pending, let me tell you. And uh, yeah, he's an absolute smasher. And he's asked me today to be his girlfriend. And I accepted. So your Auntie Nelly's been took off that dusty shelf now. She's actually gone and got herself a boyfriend. Not an imaginary boyfriend, a real boyfriend. He's called Danny from Berry, and I couldn't be happier. He's absolutely stunningly gorgeous. So there you go. Hope Paul is well. You're watching me from Canada. You're radiant today, Auntie Nelly. I think that's because I'm just really happy. I've got a man in my life, he's my boyfriend. He makes me smile and do other things. So, you look foxy on your dick. Well, thank you very much. Shall we get going with the very first dear Antonelli of the evening? Because I have no idea how many are in the inbox that I've just printed it rather than looking at my phone. So, everything I read, no idea till I read it. All my advice is purely for entertainment purposes and it's simply off the cuff. Shall we get going? I think we should. Let's go. Okay, dear Auntie Nelly, anonymous please. I'm a 25 year old woman and I've been with my boyfriend for 10 years. All right, so they were together when they were 15 maybe. They've lived together for three years now and their sex life is okay, but 
everything changed with the pressures of life, okay? We started having date nights twice a month to keep the spark there, okay, and the excitement. We started spending more quality time together, which has been lovely. But I miss the days where we get home, rip each other's clothes off, and get into the box under the bed that was full of sex toys. Oh dear. Any advice on how I can bring myself to initiate spontaneity again? It's like I've forgotten what to do, thanks. Well, I mean, you've been together three years now, haven't you? And it is fucking hard work, is a relationship. You have actually got to put effort in on a daily basis. Otherwise, it gets a bit stagnant. And there's only so many things that you can do that are exciting that then become the norm and then they become a bit habitual. And the fact that you're living together, I mean, doing the washing and the ironing and going to work and doing the shopping, it's not sexy, is it? So it's about finding that sexy again. I don't think it's about getting through the door and ripping each other's clothes off again. I think it's about finding that sexy spark in you again. Maybe you don't feel very sexy because you're working, you've been shopping, the washing basket's overflowing, he's left his dirty socks on the bedroom floor again. It's just not sexy, is it? So it's about bringing that sexy back in you. And it's about dealing with your partner in a sexy way. So once you've got all the normal housekeeping out the way, then it's about those date nights being about purely you two. Because what I always advise in therapy is, when you do do date nights, people end up speaking about the mum or the dad or illnesses in the family or the children or they don't actually talk to each other. So once again, just because you've been with your partner for so many years does not mean to say there's nothing new to find out about him. Things change, we change as people, our likes, our passions, our interests, our goals, our wants, our desires change. So it's about keeping on top of them as a couple and being honest with each other. And it's about the little cheeky texts in the day like, I can't stop thinking about you or I can't wait for you to see what I'm wearing when you get home tonight. Put the sexy back. It doesn't have to be about ripping each other's clothes off, dragging each other up the stairs and getting the, the, the sex toys out. It's just about finding that sexy in you again, being sexy with your partner. And it's not all about, you know, penetration and wild sex. I mean, that's great, but it's not always about that, is it? So it's about going back to basics and having sexy conversations. Maybe going over sometimes where you've been really sexy, talking about it, fantasising it about it together again and you know, sending him texts in the day that reminds him of times where you were both really sexy, really hot, really passionate. So it's about finding that sexy again. And, you know, these things, these things do happen to all couples, but it's about putting in the effort, it not becoming habitual, not just assuming, making that time for each other. It's about effort and actions speak louder than words. So the sooner you do it, the better. Moving on. Dear Auntie Nelly. Okay, okay, are we ready? Are we ready? We're off. Are we ready? We're off. <clears throat> One of my vaginal lips hangs down much lower than the other. Do you think surgery would help? So this is an anonymous flower pot who has written into Antinelli and said, one of her fanny flaps hangs down a lot lower than the other. Would surgery help? That is actually surgery. Now, I always say any advice I give is purely for entertainment purposes. If you've got anything really serious going on, like the end of your knob is a luminous green, or if your fanny stinks of Fleetwood dots, get yourself to see a professional. This girl's got one of her vaginal lips that's hanging down a lot lower than the other. And that's a surgery called lab lab labiaplasty. Yet surgery would help. But before I jump feet in first and say, I really want my fanny sorting out, what is it that's causing your problems? Is it when you wear a bikini or a swimsuit that it's really noticeable? Is it something that's uncomfortable when you sat down on it? Is it something that you feel really insecure about? And that goes along with your fanny flaps, your nose, your tits, your thighs, your ass, whatever it may be that you're not comfortable about, that you don't feel tickety-boo about, of course, there will be some kind of surgery out there to deal with that. So absolutely surgery would help. But I also want you to understand why you would want the surgery. 
Is it just because you assume that you don't look like the girls in the magazines, the girls and only fans, the girls you see on porn? Believe me, every fanny, every flap is different. And I don't think they're supposed to be twins. I think they're kind of sisters. So get it checked out with a professional. Surgery, absolutely, could be an option. But at the end of the day, you know, if your beef curtains aren't causing you any issues, then why would you go into surgery unnecessarily? Embrace it. Embrace it. Moving on. Dear Auntie Nelly, since splitting up with my boyfriend six months ago, I have had a string of one night stands. Oh, I always feel so used in the morning. Why can't I just stop it? Okay, okay, um, right, okay. So you split up with your boyfriend six months ago, you've had a string of one night stands, you always wake up in the morning and you feel like dog shit. Am I correct? I think so. What you're looking for, sweetheart, is short term love. So a lot of people who appear to be promiscuous or people who say, oh, they're easy or they jump into bed too quickly, you really have got something inside you that you need comforting. You need to, you need somebody to give you that validation. Unfortunately, even though it feels good at the time, it does feel good at the time. You know, you're getting that attention, you're getting your needs met there and then. It doesn't after because it was short term. It's not something long term. So in the process of you getting that little fix, it's like me with chocolate, that fix there and then, then the day after you sort of think, why the fuck did I do that? Because that fix has gone then, it's gone. So what, what you're trying to do is keep chasing that feeling of short term love, that someone who wants you, who desires you, who wants to be with you. Well, yeah, they, they will, won't they? Because they're getting sex out of it. So when you say you can't stop, and this is really serious when I say this, is that because you've got a sexual addiction? Because that is a thing. If not, it's because you're chasing that feeling. And what you've got to do here, sweetheart, is stop it. Distract yourself, do other things. And by doing other things, I'd honestly say first class here, what you need to actually do is look after you love you bring yourself that that love you know you're not going to get it from anybody else you've got to love you first you really have that love is somewhere deep inside you you can't rely on others to give you that validation to give you that self-worth to give you and find that self-esteem you've got to look within yourself you've got to love you first when you start looking after you a bit of self-care distracting yourself doing other things other than just having one night stands and I ain't saying don't have one night stands if that's your bag that's your fucking bag who am I to say as long as it's consensual and we're leaving kids and animals alone I can't give a fucking crack crack on but you're hurting yourself in the process so you need to start sort of like detoxing away from that feeling and finding that feeling within other things but you've really got to start working on you first you're certainly not in the right frame of mind to jump into a relationship because there's a lot in you that needs healing first so a few self-help books maybe even go and see a counsellor talk honestly and openly to your friends about it you know you might not get the sexual satisfaction from going out with your mates or seeing your friends and family in that same way but you'll certainly be around people who love you and want to be with you. And you've got to try and find um, the, the need there, if you will, while the other need becomes a little bit more no longer needed. And then once you've started to love yourself and find that you are worthy, then you can maybe look um, for, for relationships with people then because you'll be more healed. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Moving on. Dear Auntie Nelly. God, I'm having a fucking sweat here. Jesus Christ. Whew. He's 42 and I'm 39. Here we go. I'm upset because there's a lack of intimacy. All right, okay. We so rarely have sex because he can't get an erect penis. Okay. I wish there was a simple solution. <laughs> Don't we fucking all... He works hard as a taxi driver and I keep myself looking nice for him. That's straight away where you're going wrong. We don't put lipstick on for the boys. We don't do our hair for the boys. 
We don't do none of this shit for the boys. You do it for your fucking self. Yeah, all right, you do it for you. You feel good, you look good. Other people appreciate it. But never do that for no fucker else but yourself. That's number one where you're going wrong. I bought nice underwear and sex toys. And he also, he always has an excuse. I wonder why he no longer finds me physically attractive. Or is he just embarrassed? I have a high sex drive and I'm feeling very rejected. Okay, so he's got erectile dysfunction, has he? Has he been to see a general practitioner? Is it physical? Is it mental? These things happen to men, okay? And they're so quick for men not to talk about it, brush it under the table, hope that it resumes, let's not do out about it, you know, dismiss it. It's the elephant in the room. And if we don't sort it sooner rather than later, it's going to be a huge problem. But my worry here is, in a clinician way, there could be a physical problem. And the longer he ignores it, that physical problem could get worse. It could be a mental health problem. It could be medication that he's taking. It could be using recreational drugs. It could have, it could turn to alcohol in a crisis and that could be affecting him. There's a number of, you know, 101 reasons as to why he may not be able to have an erection other than you no longer turn him on, it's you. And I think that's so easy to do as females, um, people in relationships. When our partner is sort of like, not tonight, love, or I'm tired, or I don't fancy it, you immediately think it's you. It, it's, the hu it's human nature, it's how our brains work. It's not always about you, not always. So sit your partner down, hashtag kitchen table, first couple to go to the kitchen table. It is so good to get people back to the kitchen table. Um, and just say, listen, I ain't gonna go on about sex at the minute, not bothered about that. That's not what makes a relationship, it helps, but listen, I love you, you're my partner, I love you so much, I'm worried about you, I know that you're not willing to talk about it, you're embarrassed, you're ashamed, you, you know, drop your bravado, drop your ego, let's just go and get a health check, make sure you're alright, as long as your health's alright, there's nothing going on that I don't know about and we can't fix, we can look at everything else after. So I reckon, get to that kitchen table, have that discussion. You know, it's not an easy thing for a man. It sort of like can demasculate a man. It can bring down the bravado. It can, you know, it, it's a difficult situation for some people. And there could be a lot going on that you don't know about. So it's about having that conversation, communicating with your partner. And ultimately, it's not about you, love. This is about him. There's a problem with him. Let's get to the bottom of it. If it's not that, then you have a different conversation. But for now, that's what I suggest you do. Okay? Lovely. Moving on. Dear Auntie Nelly, I've been with my husband for eight years and the past two years our sex life has been dismal. Fucking nobody having sex at all tonight, is there? We want someone who's like fucking getting wrapped all over, don't we? It's not happening yet. The night is young. We have two young kids, which obviously doesn't help. No, it's not very sexy. They take up a lot of time and energy. We'd known each other as friends before getting together and sex was good in the beginning. Now it's just a fumble in the dark, if I'm lucky. I don't fancy him, to be honest, she says. I'm not sure whether I can I can make myself attracted to him anymore. Christ on a bike. He probably feels the same about me, but neither of us say anything. Oh, fantastic. So communication's broken down completely. They're not shagging when they are shagging it's a bit of a fucking two pumps and a fucking squirt she reckons he don't fancy her and then and then she don't fancy him but nobody's actually communicated this you're just assuming i'm only 39 so i don't want this to be it can you help yeah i can help though because um i suggest that you've got a gob you open it and you talk about it yeah it's hard having little kids running a fucking round it's hard getting pat lunches ready and who's got fucking ballet or tap or piano or guitar lessons or fucking karate or whatever it is. It's not sexy, is it? So it's about finding that date night for you two as a couple, reminding yourself what it was in the first place that got you together. What was that attraction? What were those conversations? What was it that couldn't stop you thinking about them when you woke up in the morning? What was it that made you feel happier as long as you knew that you spoke to them before you got in bed? What was it that used to tick your boxes? 
finding that. It's not too late to try and find that. But when you say I don't fancy him, do you not actually fancy him? Or is it, is it, is it a case of you're just not feeling very sexy at the minute because there's a fucking shitload going on, like washing, ironing, kids, school, homework. There's a lot going on. So when there's a lot going on, we don't feel very sexy. Sexy is like, fuck off with your fucking dick. Can't be asked. But then when he is coming near with you with his dick, it's like two pumps and a fucking squirt. I'm sorry, but I ain't sleeping in no fucking wet patch if I've not even had a nice time. Don't you fucking do. I'd rather you go off and have fucking wank. There's the Kleenex. Off you fuck. So going back to basics, start courting each other again. Start dating again. Start getting to know who you both are again in this new relationship as parents with small children. But keep reminding yourself as what it were. Now, at the end of the day, if you really don't fucking fancy him, then it's a no-go, is it? You do not have to sleep with him no matter how many years you've been with him. No means fucking no, doesn't it? So, you know, you do not have to do that. You don't owe him nothing. So, yeah, moving on to the next page now at Dear Antonella. So I'm hoping that... Are you still all with me? I can't see. I can't see any comments. Mm. I am hoping that... There's some good ones. Oh! Now then, are we ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Dear Auntie Nelly, my girlfriend has a big dog. And she lets it sleep in the bedroom. The problem is, she lets it sniff around us when we are having sex. Okay. It's almost as if she's allowing, allowing the dog to join in. He's not actually joining in, Auntie Nelly. He's just sniffing. But it really puts me off. It doesn't seem to bother her at all. I love her very much, but I don't know how much longer I could do this. Please help. Okay. I don't know how anyone could have sex with the partner with doggy bedroom. Not because, like, dogs are not allowed in the bedroom. I ain't like that. Hang on a minute. We're all watching from the panto house. Oh, so panto are watching my night time with nelly can i just give a big shout out to byron ailish and nana gethin oh stephen sullivan i adore you my darling and thank you very much i hope you're getting much needed laughter and relief really so there's a big fucking alsatian at top at bed you're being shagged and there's a dog sniffing i wouldn't like that and i think the earlier you mention it the better Things happen to you because you allow it to happen. How many times do I tell you that as an agony aunt, as your auntie Nelly? I tell you all the time. Things happen because you are allowing it to. So the quicker you mention it, I mean, the dog is there sniffing around because that's what fucking dogs do. Before you actually get in bed and have sex, can you not settle the dog down, give it a few treats, put it on its favourite bed, its favourite blanket, leave it downstairs in the lounge? This is really really simple to sort out does not have to be doesn't have to be difficult just mentioned the panto a lot there it's still running at bolton panto alice in wonderland if you haven't got your tickets get your tickets now right dear auntie nelly i don't know who to ask so i'll ask you it's obviously fucking last resort isn't it i've been married 25 years but divorced now from the love of my life we split only because I put her through a lot with threatening lines. Well, a threatening line. What do you mean? I put her through a lot with threatening lines. What what kind of lines? What do you mean? Like, we were married 10 and I got... A, oh, okay, okay, right, okay, okay. We were married for 10 years and I got a stormer. And she had no problem with it but lonely and would like to go with someone else. But it's the sex. What? How do you tell, just think, if getting a blowjob that I have a bag of shit on their head? <laughs> or having sex, it's like eating a packet of crisps. Plus, how do you would say, I don't know, right, okay, yeah, okay, so, it's all right, it's all right, don't worry about it. Right, 
you are somebody that was in a relationship, you're not now, you're looking to have a relationship, but you've got this, what you see as a physical problem, you've got a stoma, which is one of them colostomy bags, I think, I don't know if that's the right word, but I think it might be, I'm not, I'm not a medical professional, um, and what you're saying is, when you think of your prospective partner down on the knees, giving you a blowjob, as you put it, would they find that sexy because they've got a bag of shit on their head? Because that's your stormer, isn't it? Your colostomy bag. Does that colostomy bag have to be on their head whilst they're giving you head? Can you not, like, tie it up? Can you not put something around it? Do they not have things now that can, like, hide a stormer, like a big, nice belt that goes round so it stays in place rather than fucking slapping her old fucking head with a bag of shit? And when you say it makes a crisp packet noise, so you're thinking of penetrating her, and then she's going to be hearing, like, rustling. I mean, if somebody were in bed with me, shagging me, and I could hear fucking Chris, I'd stop him at middle, me and say, get salt and vinegar out, come on, let's have a packet of Chris. <laughs> Whether it be a stoma, a limp, a prosthetic arm, the fact you've got a stutter, the fact that you had a stroke, the fact you're registered disabled, whatever it is, that is you. And yes, okay, we're all attracted to a certain type of person, somebody who looks a certain way, we've all got types, there has to be a physical attraction. But when you start getting to know people and you are honest about your disabilities, you'll attract the right people. The people who don't want the bag of shit on the red, let's say, won't text you back, will they? They'll block you, they'll get rid of you, will match you, whatever it is you're meeting these people. The ones who are not that bothered, they're not that shallow, They'll start to become, they'll get to know you as a person. They'll fall in love with you as a person. So no matter what your disability is, they'll see past that. And when they're making love to you, whether it be a blowjob or a fucking sex or whatever it is, that is part of you. They're making love to you. They're not thinking about that stoma bag, if that makes sense. If somebody's got a limp, half a leg, no legs, no arm, they're making love to you. It's about you, your soul and you as a person, not your disability. So you need to stop worrying about what people are gonna think and how they're gonna judge you, because at the end of the day, you don't wanna be with somebody like that. You want somebody to love you for you, not not your physical appearance or what might be right, right with you or wrong with you. It's about you. So that's a really good way as well to like weed out the ones who are shallow, because you wouldn't want to be with a person who is shallow, would you? Moving on. Moving on. No, I don't think I would say get salt and vinegar out because I wouldn't want Chris in bed. Crumbs in bed. It's not nice. Dear Auntie Nelly, I keep planning on giving my boyfriend a blowjob soon. Woohoo! Here we go. It'll be my first time that I give anybody a blowjob, but it won't be his. I am kind of excited, but I'm also very nervous. I want to do this right and don't know how. I have no idea what I'm doing. I might try to give him my first hand job and while he did say, oh, she did try and give him, all right, so she tried to wank him off, right? And he did come, but he had to make himself come. I just think that it, I could have done better and I didn't. So how am I gonna be able to do a blow job? Do you have any tips? Okay, so. No, because it's not about giving, it's not about thinking you have to be Linda Lovelace for starters. It's not about thinking there's a way of giving a blowjob that is like, how can I say this? There's no manual for it. Everybody's going to like it differently. And I think what's, what's nice about this is, you get to sort of, he kind of knows that you've never done it before and you're willing to do it because it's always going to be consensual. Don't ever do anything that you don't want to do or anything that makes you feel physically sick because that's not sexy. So when you are ready to do it, I think you'll find that he'll help you. And it's not about blowing and it's not about sticking it all in your gob and open for fucking best. Don't bite. 
um, you know, it's about doing what you think is comfortable. You don't have to put it all in. I've got to be really careful with hand and gob actions because I'll get banned. So, you know, just open your mouth slightly, make sure that you've got lots of spit in your mouth, it's nice and wet, you don't want it to go into a fucking dry gob. And then just like kiss it and lick it and suck it a little bit and he, he, as long as he doesn't start shoving your fucking head like that down it and then you're fucking sick on it, you'll be fine. And, and it's not something that you should fear because it's not really that big of a thing. It's actually really sensual and really nice. Um, I mean, not everybody enjoys it. Not everybody wants to do it. Some ladies do it, but they don't swallow. Some ladies love swallowing because it's the only way to get the fucking protein um <laughs> apparently it's full of calories apparently um but yeah blowjobs do i have any tips only do it when you feel ready don't push yourself to do it only put in your mouth what you feel is comfortable don't let if he even puts his hand on your head take his hand away because you're not at that stage you're not at that fucking stage for all I know, you've got a gag reflex and you could throw up everywhere and that's going to put you off doing it again. But there is absolutely no way on God's green earth that there's any tips to a blowjob because you could learn to be the blowjob queen with such a body now. You could meet another fella, try and do your same old tricks and he might not like it. So there's no tips. The only tips I can give is make sure you're comfortable, make sure you do want to do it and do it at your pace speed and leisure don't let anybody force you or push your head down or make you do it and just enjoy it and i think you know it is it's nice i think it's nice everyone's different but i think it's quite nice um hey nelly hey my boyfriend oh here we go here we go here we go my boyfriend wants me to sit on his lap and he wants to lift me when having sex oh but i weigh 15 stone Oh, I weigh 50 stone 11 and he's only 11 stone. I feel like I'm going to be too heavy and I might hurt him, but he finds me so sexy and he makes me feel like the most beautiful girl in the world. Oh, I know confidence is sexy and I don't want to come across as body conscious, but do not want to squash him like a bug or flatten him like a pancake either. Many thanks, what can I do? Oh! I'm like a pancake. <laughs> right, girl here is 15 stone 11. She reckons if she gets on her boyfriend's lap or sits on top, she's going to squash him and kill him. That's not going to happen, okay? That will not happen. I think rather than like jumping on and fucking going out for fucking leather. Just get on nice and gently. If you feel that you're confident enough. So I know some girls will write in and say, I don't want to get on top because he can see everything and I'm, I know he's watching me and he's looking at me and I'm not comfortable. And I get that. But if you're comfortable about getting on top, now you don't always have to be naked. You could have your bra on, you could have a t-shirt on. But you getting on his lap and him lifting you on it, if you will, rather than going, no, get off me, come here. No, get off me, come here. You're not gonna you're not gonna hurt him. And I always say that sex is not always perfect. Things do go wrong in the bedroom. You might fall off and hit your head up radiator, you might do a fanny fart, he might sneeze, one of you might fart. You, you know, all sorts can happen in the bedroom. You might get on top of him and he might go, Oh my knee, my leg, my bag's gone. These things happen during sex. It's not always to do with weight. And I think you've got a concern here that you're using as an excuse. I think it's more you and how you perceive yourself on how you feel and how you look. So I, th I don't think it's about you thinking you're going to squash him. I think it's about you thinking I'm a lot bigger than him and he's going to see me in all my glory on top. And I don't want him to do that. And I'm not going to enjoy it because I'll be trying to lift myself off the bed. So I don't put my weight on him and it's going to be shit. So it's about getting over that barrier. But if you want to do it and he wants to do it and it's going to make him happy and it sounds to me like he's making you more than happy, makes you feel like 
you're the most beautiful girl in the world. What a lovely statement to say. Fucking climb on. Climb on and ride him into fucking battle, kid. Crack on. Moving on. Dear Auntie Nelly, I'm in my 30s and have been with my wife for eight years. We've had two kids and in that time, family life has been good. No one likes a fucking show off flower. Moving on. She's my best friend and I love her. But the problem is she hardly ever wants to have sex. Oh God, they're not all perfect, have they? I have eye sex drive and she does this. It's always on her terms and when she wants to do it. Often she don't want to do it because she's tired. <laughs> oh, everything else in our relationship is good, but I don't think we'll last long term because we cannot get on the same page about sex. Any advice? I'm absolutely fucking roasting. Right, so once again, very boring, dear Antonelli, because they've been quite similar, haven't they? Communicate with her, tell her that you're worried about her, tell her that, you know, is it a case of the kids are doing her head in, she ain't got time to feel sexy, what can you do to make her feel sexy? It's not about the fucking sex, actually, actually Sheila, let's call her. Everyone's anonymous, don't know. But I'm worried about you because I'm worried about us as a couple, I'm worried about you. You've lost your spark, what's happening? How are you feeling? Is it physical? Is it mental? You know, we don't always have to feel so rejected and think the problem is us or there's a third party. There could be an underlying medical thing here. So I want you to communicate with your wife and tell her everything you've told me, okay? Maybe don't tell her that you can't see it lasting just yet. Hmm. And that's a bit sledge. I put some ice in my glass and now it's fucking pissed all over. Fuck's sake. Dear Auntie Nelly, as a couple, we love watching... What do you love watching? Oh. Dear Auntie Nelly, as a couple, we love watching porn. Lately, he has been straying towards trans porn, which I have no interest in. Now he wants to have some sort of experience and I'm panicking because I don't want to. Over the past couple of months, he keeps bringing it up and saying, why do you always say no when I say, can we just have for once a threesome with someone trans? I only want to do it once and I'm not gay. That's what he says. He just says that why will I not let him fulfill his fantasy? Oh, I know sex with just one person can be boring, but I really don't want to do it. I don't want to lose him. Wish I could simply go along, but I can't. I like, blah, 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 blah. right, okay. If you allow him to have a threesome with a trans person, you bring in a third party into your relationship, whether that be for the night or for several times, you... It's something you don't want to do. Whether you want to watch trans porn or not, it's something you don't want to do. And I always say consent is a massive thing. If you don't want to fucking do it, don't do it. You don't ever do anything in the bedroom for the other person to make them happy, for them to get their needs. It, it's a no, it's a no. That person needs to understand that you're really not on board with this, you don't feel comfortable, it's not your bag. If they still feel that they haven't yet quite shagged every fucking Tom, Dick and Harry, then they're not ready to be in a committed um, monogamous relationship. Therefore, they need to get fucked and they need to go and sort the sexual desires out and find out what it is they want until they're ready to settle. Maybe they don't want to be in a relationship where it's monogamous. Maybe they want several partners. Who fucking knows? But I always say consent here. If your partner asks you to do anything, watch trans porn, have a threesome, go to a fucking swinging club, put some sexy underwear on, fucking fist yourself, whatever it may fucking be that you think, no, and I'm doing this just to keep you, or I might do this just so you're happy, it's a fucking no, it's no, it's not consensual, it's not going to bring you happiness, it's going to mean that you're forced into doing something that you're not going to be comfortable with, so it's not consensual, it's a no, and you need to make sure that when you say no, you mean no, you never ever, ever, ever do anything in the bed, 
red dream especially that doesn't sit right with you it's the no and if it's a no and your partner can't respect that we all have a laugh and a joke we have a partners you know we'll say things like oh if you were allowed to pass who would you celebrity crush be whatever it might be but if that actually came along if you're not in a relationship where you 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 feel comfortable seeing other people why would that happen and it's the case of if you now then allow that to happen in order to keep that person as a partner and then you're in a relationship together and that's happened and you kind of move on a little bit from it then what's he going to fucking ask for next you're opening up a can of worms there that I don't think you're going to like. No means no. Have that conversation. Be very honest with your partner and say, that's never going to fucking happen, Flower. But if that's something that you really want and can't live the rest of your life without, who am I to say, there's the door, hashtag, fuck off. Bye, Felicia. Okie dokie. I don't think this is real. Shall I read it anyway? I don't, I think it's a scam. Fuck, I tell you what, this week the trolls have been absolutely fucking horrible to me. Oh God, I bet it's a troll. Right, let's do it anyway. Let's do it, but I don't think it's real. Dear Auntie Nelly, I love my life. Our sex life was over a long time ago. A couple of months ago, we had a plumber. You see, I saw the word plumber. And, 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 and yeah no fuck off apparently he got a plumber in to do a few jobs in kitchen and he had a spy camera designed to look like a smoke alarm he didn't tell his wife because he didn't want to worry her but he was just keeping an eye on plumber so he didn't nick out yeah all right <clears throat> when he watched the footage back he couldn't believe his eyes the plumber was having sex with his wife in kitchen oh fuck off no they weren't I enjoyed watching the footage and wanking, right, okay. But now it's all stopped and there's no more jobs to do. Do I tell my wife I want more jobs? Oh, fuck off. It's not even fucking real, that, is it? It's not even fucking real. You're a fucking voyeur, if that's the case. And if your wife, your sex life was over a long time ago, why is your wife fucking, fucking plumber? Fuck off. Moving on. Fuck off with the trolls under your fucking room. What have I had this week? Oh, what trolls have I had this week? Um, the usual, really, like, Nelly, you're a fat bastard. Nelly, you're not funny. You're touching 50. Why do you... What, 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 why do you... Who'd want to take you out on a date? I've had that one. You're touching 50. Who'd want to take you out on a date? Uh, no wonder your daughter lives so far away, because I would if you were my mum. I'd love to see your death on my social media feed. Uh, yeah, I think some of it, it's been hot, and it? It's been a bit hot, so I blame it on whether people have gone a bit fucking simple. Moving on. Okay, so, there is no foreplay sex with my girlfriend, and is, her vagina is perfect and heaven-like. When we do foreplay, she just likes it. She gets too turned on, so her vagina loses. Right, so, all right, okay, yeah, oh, fuck off. Move, I'm moving on from that. That's not even real either. He's saying that when he does foreplay with her, her vagina gets really wet so it becomes loose. And then what he's saying is if he doesn't give a foreplay, it's tighter. So she's then saying, I want foreplay. And he's saying no because your fanny's too slack. I don't think that's real. Moving on. Oh, now then. Are we ready? I'm ready. Are you fucking ready? Let's go. Dear Antonelli, I really don't know what to do. Someone is blackmailing me with photos, text messages I sent them. Now they are threatening that they will post them on social media. I met this person on Tinder and we got on well and quickly. We both decided to come off the app and started texting daily and things soon got to sexting. So I turned on. So I, I felt so turned on by him that I did everything he asked me to do. Oh, I even made him a video of double penetration. We then stopped talking. He ghosted me and then blocked me. 
He's now sending all my videos to everybody in my messenger. They've all seen it. What do I do? I feel like this is ruining my life. Do you know what? It's so easy sometimes to get swept up with emotions, especially when we're in that kind of dream world. It's not reality, is it? So you've met someone, you fancy them, they fancy you, you move to text, WhatsApp, whatever, you might do a cheeky FaceTime, you might send the odd video, your tits or, you know, you, a, a tip pic or they've sent a dick pic, you know, that happens daily. But the thing is, that person's now got you without consent and he's sharing your images, whether that's an image or a video, it's illegal, it's illegal. That is a law that was passed quite some years ago now, and it's classed, it's classed as revenge porn. You've got absolutely nothing to feel embarrassed or ashamed about. This won't end your life. This, you won't be the first it's happened to, and you're certainly not going to be the last. What it is, is a life lesson, and we all have lessons. Every day is a fucking school day, isn't it? And we all learn something every day. That's your lesson. Go to the police immediately. Tell them exactly, there's no shame here. They will have seen this on more than one occasion, believe me. There's a reason it's a law now. There's a reason why people have to pay penalties. There's a reason why people go on, on lists now. There's a people why people go to prison about it. It has been shared to your people that you know and it is illegal what that person's doing. It's done without consent, whether it's for blackmail, what is he trying to say, whatever it is, get as much evidence as you can. Get yourself to the police station. If it's a, um, a, a male officer, you feel uncomfortable, ask to speak to a female officer. Do whatever it is that makes it easier for you to go sooner rather than later. But do not feel any shame. Absolutely don't feel any shame for that. That can happen, that does happen, that has happened. And you won't be the first and you won't be the last. Now, I always say, whenever you share anything that's so personal like that with your partner, you know, do you trust them? Will you trust them? Is it something that you can keep between you two? Yeah, absolutely, Auntie Nelly. What if the, the phone gets lost? It's in the cloud, you know. It, there's a lot of things that I don't want to be that, that person that takes all the fucking fun out of everything, but you've always got to think what if. And I think when it comes to sexy videos, um, sexy pictures, whatever you're sending, would you be happy for other people to see that? If it's a case of, if that goes it fucking daily fail tomorrow, I couldn't give a fuck, send it. If it's something you feel quite vulnerable about, then don't send it, don't do it. And whether that's with somebody you've just met, haven't met, or somebody you've been with for 10 years, once again, it's easy to get swept up in negative feelings, false feelings, uh, thinking you're in love, you're not, you're in lust or whatever, or, you know, sexting, having phone sex, whatever it is that they do now, fucking wank each other off on fucking FaceTime, I don't know. Just think about what it is you're actually doing and if that actually does get out in the public domain, is that something you'd be happy with? If it's a no, don't send it. Oh. Right, okay. Dear Auntie Nelly, I have been with my boyfriend for a year now. It is a really loving, honest relationship and I'm very happy with my boyfriend, right, okay. Our love life is brilliant apart from one thing. What is that one thing? Early in the relationship, because of my own hang-up, Santinelli, I faked orgasms. Now I find myself continuing, so he doesn't think anything is wrong, he's very loving and considerate and I do genuinely orgasm but that's after on my own in the bathroom. For some stupid reason I can't work out how to stop doing what I do and tell him so that I can then have an orgasm with him. I can't confess now we've been together too long and I feel like I've been lying all the time, what do I do? Okay, so... When you first got together, you've been together for a year and it was lovely 
and unfortunately he couldn't make you come so you pretended that he had because you thought oh it's well tight you can't make me come so I'll pretend that he has and then he thinks I've had a right nice time but when he's like asleep I'll go off to the bathroom and sort myself out and that's then become your sexual habit with your partner so your partner thinks that you're sexually satisfied and you are you are but not through your partner and I know what you're saying it's too late in the day now it's like fucking a year in and you're gonna feel like you're gonna be a massive liar if you tell him I always say honesty is the best policy but 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 not in this occasion this is quite easy to fix I'd say so the next time you are in bed with your boyfriend partner whatever whoever it may be and you are having sex you are you know bedroom olympics are going on you're having a nice time what is it that you do in that bathroom after that gets you off whatever it is that you enjoy during masturbation during foreplay whatever it is why don't you kind of guide their hand get their fingers ask them to do that why don't you sort of like do something new and exciting maybe mutual masturbation he sits there wanking himself off while you sit there fingering yourself do something you know it's been a year in of course things have want to change in the bedroom otherwise they become stagnant so why don't you then kind of say i want you to do this to me so that things start changing without it being a massive change or a shock and then sort of like keep doing what it is you're doing until you actually orgasm without it being right well he's done now and i'm not so i forgot to the fucking bathroom because if you go into the bathroom to finish yourself off you must have got to a stage where you feel like you need to orgasm so i think it's about taking a bit more care and time not panicking not having it in your head thinking right when he's finished i'll fuck off and go and sort myself out just enjoying that and maybe more foreplay there's a lot to be said about foreplay and i don't think foreplay is done enough I think foreplay is so important to get to know each other's bodies. Mutual masturbation is so important to get to know how your partner likes it, what they like to touch, how they like to be touched, what pressure they like on them, etc, etc. So I think it's about maybe introducing that as part of your sexual ritual and see how you go. Who's enjoyed tonight's night time with Nelly? Because I fucking loved it. It is so good to be back in the house. Please. If you've got any more night time with Nellies, write into the page. Any Sunday services, write into the page. Any review requests, write into the page. Any advice I have given on tonight's show has been purely for entertainment purposes. Once again, any actual problems, go and see your GP. Any advice I have given, as I said, was for over 18s so only. Viewer discretion was advised. If anybody comments on your comments with gift, giveaway, competition, you've won a prize in Box Meets a Succam, don't fall for it. And all being well, I will see you all very, very soon, but I'll definitely be back here next Wednesday night. And who knows, the room that's had no action will maybe get, it might get christened. It might get christened. If it does, I'll share it all with you. Take care, flower pots, and I'll see you very, very soon.